friends. How's it going? Hey, what's, what's up? up? It's Ray Paoletta back with the snake trivia. That's what we're talking about today. <laughs> all, all snake trivia. Right. That's what I signed up for. Yeah. Did you get your license oh, yeah. since the last time you've been on? <laughs> I'm working toward it. You know, I've had a few things come up here and there, but I'm actively pursuing that goal. <laughs> okay, if we're doing if we're doing snake trivia, um, Anthony, I'm going to send you some pictures. And Ray, I need you to help me identify this. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I no, I was out yeah. in my garden this week and I found leftover yeah. snake. <laughs> oh, like shedding, like this molting, real... like molted snake. Yeah, yeah. A real term. And I'm really confused about the it browser. because, dude, yeah, you're living like so an A24 like horror movie over there. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't, I don't know if it's horror, but I'm very confused by this. So this, we're gonna bring up a picture. This is yeah. a the shedding yeah. of a snake that I found, like oh, in wait. a Where bush. Am I on that still? Here we go. Yeah, that that looks great. So, like, do snakes just like climb up into bush branches? And I don't know. I don't know how you know, it gets you the head. What is Maybe he got here? caught on the branch. Yeah, that's Maybe a good idea. He just I got think... snagged. And the only way to get out was to just leave like, the Like, you ever been walking through your kitchen <laughs> and your pocket catches on a drawer? <laughs> <laughs> same thing, same concept. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so if you could let me know what species and uh, genus this is. Yeah, what do we feel like? Yeah, that? yeah. I don't know. I mean, like, I'd have to have my team look this over, honestly. But um, <laughs> I do feel like I should be getting paid for my reptilian consulting. So um, yeah, if you, yeah. I'll, I'll send you an invoice after the show. Yeah. Don't worry about it. Okay, sounds good. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> New That's profile snake content. right there. <laughs> <laughs> you got to put that on LinkedIn or something. Yeah. <laughs> People will be so confused by my LinkedIn presence if I put that up there. They're already confused by it. So <laughs> I think we're all confused by LinkedIn in general. So I think it's not that out of the blue, yeah. honestly. <laughs> LinkedIn. Is this for shit posting? <laughs> <laughs> Thought leadership. Random snake molted. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Big engagement yeah. on that though. It's all about farming yeah. engagement. I think LinkedIn. I guess we're just talking about this now, but I feel like it's the only place that people know they can find you posting things. So it's become the place where people post things. Like it's yeah, the only place you like, can reliably yeah. look as is, did that person post a thing? If they have a LinkedIn, they probably posted it. Other than that, <laughs> yeah. you're shit out of luck. Find their Mastodon instance. Go ahead. What, what a future we live in where everything else has gotten so bad that LinkedIn is the best social network. <laughs> it's bad, maybe. Which is saying a lot because I always say the most cursed internet interaction is somebody wishing you a happy birthday on LinkedIn. Like that is the most <laughs> devastating L of all time is happy birthday LinkedIn message. Like, why do you hate me? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even hiring. I mean, come on. Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> True dystopian vibes. I'd love to see it. Yikes. <laughs> Jake, did you bring a drink today? I did, yeah. So right. uh, I have another another craft, craft beer today from Colima. This is mm. Ticus, Ticus. Uh, it's Porter. Getting a little... Oh, it's, we're having Porter. another... Another freaking cold snap here in Yucatan. It's Ooh. cold this week again. And so I have to get a warm beer, which is poor, mm. obviously. I'm sure it's really cold. Yeah. It's very cold, warm beer. Yeah. Cold. <laughs> so, yeah. Cheers. Cheers. What do you got? I got distracted by a snake comment from Roxanne that, <laughs> that apparently is an intentional use of a branch. Thank you, so, Roxanne. Yes. Thank you, Dr. Bones. <laughs> Love. Appreciate it. That's good. Yeah. <laughs> Too good. Ray, what'd you bring? Well, I was, uh, you know, I feel like I had to upstage you both on your own show after my last yes. few showings wow. where I did my boring wine thing. So <laughs> this time, uh, given the content of what we'll be discussing today, I made what I am dubbing a moontini. Wow. A moontini, folks. Um, it's actually a French 75 and not a martini. Martini fans, do not come for me in the comments. I am one of you, okay? <laughs> I love martinis. French 75s are my jam, though. Come on. Yes, oh, yeah. exactly, right? And today I use this with the lovely Empress Gin, which is what gives it this mm. distinct kind of purple color. And I know the moon is not purple, but it's really about curating a vibe, like creating an ambiance, you know? So um, in an abstract way, there was a lunar theme going on here. It just does not look like our moon. But a moon, perhaps. It could be like for, 
for the listeners who don't know the difference between a martini and a French 75, and definitely not for me, uh, what is the difference between them? <laughs> oh, I'm so glad I get to talk about this. Um, okay, so a martini has vermouth. That's like a totally different recipe, but it can come with vodka or gin. I am uh, partial to a gin martini personally. I okay. love gin. Like doing gin, uh, <laughs> drinking gin and doing crossword puzzles is like the best uh post work combination in my opinion i love that uh but that's basically the essence of a martini and a french 75 is um gin it's lemon juice simple syrup and a little bit of champagne or sparkling wine in this case i use prosecco i cheated a little bit nice. sorry it's like a french riviera 75 <laughs> french like... riviera so, exactly it's about curating a vibe like i said we're, we're all in con on a beach mm -hmm. sipping these yeah Great. oh and then i wanted to do a little lemon twist too um another abstract moment here right because we are talking about slim today and i wanted to have some little nod to the wonky landing so it's a little <laughs> curly lemon <laughs> man this is like, you pulled out all the stops on this one. Yeah, I, I appreciate this. Yeah. I wanted to commit to the bit, you know? You really, I, I only have yeah. the half, the last of a surprise highlight six pack that was in my fridge and I don't know how it got there. And <laughs> that's what I'm I'm drinking today, so. What a surprise treat for you. I know. Cheers. It brings me right to Florida every time. That's, that's what's up. <laughs> yeah. That's hilarious. Right the that, Florida that beer for me is- dock that we is... had our party at that you left the other party and came to our party for. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I was I was really like party hopping that night, <laughs> and it was really fun too. Those Jimmy Buffett uh, Land Shark beers are pretty. <laughs> I gotta say, R.I.P. to him. Also, R.I.P. Oh, Jimmy Buffett. He died. That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. R.I.P. <laughs> Man, this is the real start. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Every time you guys have me on the show, I feel like yeah. I just. I'm like a chaos agent, but it's okay. Some would wonder why we have you on the show, and others yes. would say that's exactly why we have you on the show. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, Ray, like I have a question for you, Ray. Shoot. Have you ever seen? Oh, actually, before that, I'm sorry. I'll get to your question in a second. I have a question for Jake to start this. Jake, would you like to issue any retractions today about the Slim Lander? <laughs> Moon Sniper? About Moon Sniper? <laughs> <laughs> about Moon Sniper. Any retractions? Any retractions? Are you to say that it it worked? Is that what you're trying to say? Yes, I would. Because oh. last time you were out here, I've been I've been standing all these Moonlanders out here. I was here telling you and Eric Berger that Peregrine did great, even though it couldn't land on the moon. The rest went super good. I'm out here saying Slim stuck that landing, even if it didn't get power. And lo and behold, it came back to life, Jake. And you were out here gatekeeping and saying, well, it didn't generate power. It's only going to live for a couple hours. And and here it is, you know. What do you what do you have to say for yourself? Yeah. What do I you have, have a retraction? I don't think I have a retraction. No retractions. No, no. Okay. I think I think what I said was it didn't land correctly, but the mission got some stuff done. And I think I'm standing by that. Well then so I'm moving on. Launched. I'm oh, moving on to Ray's launched. question. Ray, have you ever seen a more epic of moon lander than one that lost its engine on the way down to the surface and still landed <laughs> despite Jake's <laughs> objections? First of all, icon. Okay, iconic <laughs> landing. First of all, a little nap, that's fine. You know what? You already landed on the moon, like you're good. You already did most of what you were intending to do, so it's fine. Okay, you deserve that little nap. Take the nap. And then to wake up and just be like, yeah, what did I miss? And start taking pictures of the moons, the moon, and then not only taking pictures of the moon, but get this, the rocks are named after dog breeds. <laughs> were we aware of this were we aware because the scientists have named the lunar rocks after dog breeds uh, where who else is doing it like slim i'm sorry nobody so for that alone i have to stand personally i forgot about the dog breeds i'll be honest uh yeah, yeah this was the one that this is earlier today right that this went up so what's going on here what kind of dogs you know what dogs we're looking at in this case I did I did breeds? write down yeah I did write down some of the names from uh one of the pictures they posted there's okay Shiba Inu Toy Poodle Bulldog I don't know why balloons just did you guys just see that 
Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> <It's> the... <laughs> Once again, you are this getting a, a Mac OS theme. <laughs> Why? Yeah. What did I do? What did I yeah, gesture yeah. to trigger the balloons? You can't get to do it anymore. Yeah. Uh... <laughs> Wait, Ray, you skipped over to Toy Poodle, and I actually have some questions about Toy Poodle. Yeah, um, go for it. They posted this photo and said this was Toy Poodle. Uh, what is Toy Poodle? <laughs> I don't know what I'm looking at here. Is this a, is this zoomed Again. in on a rock? Again, we're going on vibes. We're not going <laughs> for a literal Toy Poodle. It's just a vibe. It's just an essence. Okay. And I am personally in favor of naming all the things after dogs and cats. Have I told you both about my taxonomy of all things hypothesis? No. I I'd think that all, all animals in my mind, granted, this is Matt's to my mind, all animals are either cats or dogs. <laughs> all of them, including snakes. <laughs> a massive reshaping of the taxonomy of, you know, the Wikipedia <laughs> editors are going to be <laughs> driven yeah. nuts by this change. I can't the paper that explains this one. It's gonna be <laughs> Please walk us through some prime examples. <laughs> well, just name an animal. I'll tell Giraffe. you if it's a dog. What's a snake? <laughs> snake? Cat. Cat. Definitely Cat. <laughs> Giraffe? giraffe giraffe yeah dog okay i feel like, like these two you would have thought of before but it looks like this you is... just thought of this now of how yeah, you this, categorize this, is these, which is fun how you how you figured this all out <laughs> darwin is like darwin is in his grave rolling over just like <laughs> crying in hysterics right now you're kind of just <laughs> swirling the french yeah. 75 as you declare this so it's great Cat caterpillar <laughs> major sorting hat vibes here <laughs> caterpillar is absolutely a dog Absolutely. However, in the name, and it turns into a beautiful butterfly. Butterflies, though, are cats. <laughs> <laughs> so that one's a little bit branch of a jump. Yeah. Listen, right. I didn't make the rules. I mean, I did, <laughs> but <laughs> dolphins. Oh, dolphins are dogs. 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 Yeah. dogs. Definitely. Dogs. I think I understand this as I mm -hmm. as you unveil it more. I think I get the yeah. Hundred percent. You'll you you'll either... you'll start to track. Yeah, you're either cute and fun or mean and hot. Those are the two options, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just the ultimate divide of all things. <laughs> we will let the listeners decide where Jake and I fall in the cat dog spectrum. Yeah, yeah. Wait, wait, yeah. Which, one is, which one's the cat? Which one's the dog? That's the that's the homework for. So listeners. slim though. Uh... Yeah, they named, I just, I'm confused by their observations. Like, this is what's great. Because they just posted this and they were like, we got this, we named this Toy Poodle. And I literally just cannot understand what I'm supposed to be looking at in this. It's just a picture of the ground from as best I can tell. But, I mean, this thing was a bizarre moonlander. Truly bizarre. I, I don't feel like we've gotten an explanation on the main engine nozzle failure mode yet. Have we yeah, figured know. that out? I'm Why not fell sure. Off? Not sure. It just seemed but to fall off like, so cleanly. Yeah, this is definitely like, it, it doesn't happen very often that we get a prime off nominee contender this early in the year. <laughs> I mean, uh, it's doing like, well. what are we it's waiting for, Jake? Like, we might <laughs> yeah, want to call it. Be off nominees right now. <laughs> it might, this might say. be it. <laughs> Yeah, like what are you waiting for at this point? I feel like you just got it. You got to hand it to him. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I, the best part about it is that JAXA just has like a great run of planetary missions. They are always really fun to watch. There's always great photos coming back from them. They do yeah. it on like five dollars and a bottle yeah. of Coke. Like there's no budget to these things compared to what we're doing over here at NASA. And yeah. I love, I love all of that. It's the best. There's I like do a have a quick question. What is going to happen next, right? Because isn't there like the lunar night for the next couple weeks? So is it going to have to brave it? Yeah. Yeah, I don't think they... Um, I don't... They don't have any heaters or anything. So they're expecting it to... Yeah, the, the hope was that they could get it back online in this particular couple of days. Mm -hmm. I, think it, I think the moon already set, actually. I think last yeah. night was the was moon set. Was so, yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, it's still on probably for a little bit until batteries die and, and mm -hmm. it gets too cold, but... It was like they had this short window from a couple days ago yeah. till now where there was enough sun to run all their electronics and it was still daylight enough. But yeah, that's, that was it. Mm. So it, moon, the moon is really funny like that. Like you've got, I mean, even yeah. this intuitive machines thing, like they're like, we can't really tell you when it's going to launch, but we know it's going to land on this day. And that's because that day is the target because that's when the lighting is there for the mission. 
And so it's like, we'll, we'll do what we got to do to get there on that time. Or we got to go to the next time the lighting's right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The, the like JAXA tenacity is really admirable. I really love that about them. So like, you know, I think about the, the Akatsuki mission at Venus where they like, mm -hmm. you know, they did the transfer and then the, they failed to enter orbit for a reason like the engine didn't work. And they're like, oh, that's okay. There's a 5-8 resonance between Venus and Earth. So in like eight years, it'll be back and we'll just do it then. And they just waited and it was just like went around and then they went back and got into orbit. And now it's like doing science. Like that kind of like wild, like just push it through. I love it. That's great. That's uh, that's exploration. And they lost an engine on descent, everybody. Like they were 50 <laughs> meters off the surface and it was just like, oh, well, we drifted 50 meters to the right, I guess. Did we determine which way it went based on where it was heading before? But they were like, we still I, landed on this main engine. I still don't have a clear picture of which way is up on this lander. So. Yeah, yeah, right, right. <laughs> well, that's the funny part it's is that. It's supposed to be like this, but the engine's like this, but it landed like this. Yeah. And... <laughs> it does the side landing thing, which I think is one of the cooler methods. Uh, let me see if I can find. There was a good diagram of this. Um, slim lander. Moon sniper. I love love Moon me a good sniper. nickname. Oh, it's so good. It's so catchy. Moon sniper. Moon sniper. But where did it come from? I still don't understand where that nickname came from. Here we go. Here's Is it because it's like a precision landing? Precision landing. Yeah, but it's a really good. intense nickname for. It yeah. is. <laughs> well, as we've seen, Anthony, sometimes Jackson doesn't quite get the translations uh, like bang on right. So. <laughs> All right. Here's this thing that I'm talking about. Maybe You're, sniper is what Google Translate returns when you say like really accurate thing. <laughs> really accurate. <laughs> All right, here's the thing, Jake. It's coming in using the engines and then it flips into vertical descent mode and then at the end, very right at the end, it uses these engines all the way down and right at the end it tips over onto its side so it lands with the engines out to the outside, uh, which I think is rad because it keeps your payload right low to the surface, which is why we all the space nerds were in love with the Dynetics lander in that it was super this, low this is really just a robotic dropship <laughs> pretty much yes yeah i mean <laughs> have fun launching off of that trajectory or off of that place that you're sitting but i just yeah it's amazing that it was like you know i guess it just so the engine fell off and then it flipped into vertical mode and then it kind of just descended with not the correct thrust so it sort of held its orientation I know, <laughs> i'm mystified by that and then rolled because it landed on a little bit of an axis I wish we could see what happened. Yeah. Yeah, that, that would have been too. great. Those well, guys. Jake, how about ingenuity? Ingenuity. Yeah. I feel like we should do a toast, honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Go ahead. You're in charge. To ingenuity. That'll do, little rover. Not rover. <laughs> helicopter. That'll do, little, That'll do, little helicopter. helicopter. That'll do. Yes, that little helicopter. It's like Brave Little Toaster vibes. How do you yeah. feel about Bill Nelson's uh, that little helicoptering of ingenuity multiple times in the in the farewell video <laughs> that was posted? <laughs> I actually didn't see it. Oh, I have to pull it up. Wait, can you, can you, yeah, I was going to say, can you either pull it up or fill me in on it? Yeah, no, I think we should watch it. Was this posted on, on Twitter? I think it was so. on, it was definitely on Twitter, I think. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, we're going to watch it because um, you think that he's done saying it and it just keeps going. And that's the real <laughs> mystery. It what was a very guy? sweet send off. It was actually really nice. Aww. Yeah. Yeah. Like you, you you know, and just to have the administrator like do a whole thing on it is they don't always do that, right? Sometimes they're just like, that's not, that's below my pay grade. So, all right, I've got know, it ready for us. I will cue it up. I will turn up the sounds here. It is bitter. Let me know. Oh, that seems that loud. I must announce that ingenuity, the little helicopter. Wait a minute. Hold on. <laughs> Safari's doing this thing where everything is all high pitched. We can't have this. <laughs> I don't know if you noticed that. <laughs> Did that come through on your side too? It came through for like yeah. a split second. Okay, it was a little bit, it was a little helium voiced, so this will be worth the wait. Hold on. They can like pull up some sort of like audio live. Uh, no, no, I just, <laughs> I just have a different browser. Auto tune it back down to reality. Let me know, or make sure you can hear this. No. You can't hear this. This is going, this is such a good segment, guys. This is yeah. like so good that Turn I have in. to open oh. my audio program to reroute <laughs> this audio right now. Why is Safari so giving you a I don't pitch know, guys. I don't know, but uh, listen, just give me a sec. Huh. Ray, I mean, you know we're professionals, right? So, I do, I do, yeah. I, and I say that all the time. Yeah. 
There we go. I'm Everyone always has. saying this. Yeah. There we go. All right. I got it. Daily you know, email. A little helicopter that could. There we go. I'm going to roll it back. Everyone's going to listen. It is bittersweet that I must announce that Ingenuity, the little helicopter that could, and it kept saying, I think I can, I think I can. Well, like it is now taking its last flight on Mars. As it was coming down for landing, at least one of its carbon fiber rotor blades was damaged. We're investigating the possibility that the blade struck the ground. This is what the blade looks like. It's a special oh, fiber wow. with a special contour. That I little didn't see helicopter them pulling the props could fly out. in yeah. a 1% yeah. percent That was, that was mentioned number two, that little Not helicopter. Not 100% atmosphere like we have on Earth. I don't know if he says it again, it but this was another two minutes, and I don't know if I have the patience for this whole video, atmosphere. to be honest. Yeah. That was it. I just wanted to say that in the first 46 seconds, he got to that little helicopter two distinct times. <laughs> which I find incredible. That yeah. little intrepid copter. Also, Damn. he freelanced the whole, and it kept saying, I think I can, I think I can. He freelanced that 20 seconds into <laughs> yeah. this post, Off right? Script, yeah. <laughs> His immediate person's like, oh, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. Yeah. I mean, it was kind of, I will say, I was sad. Like, hearing about, I mean, I know, and listen, it's a huge accomplishment totally exceeded all of its goals it totally made it years longer than i think anybody thought it was going to last so my hat's off to that but i hate it when the robots die man it sucks <laughs> yeah it's it was a long lifespan given what it what it you know was supposed to do i kind of like think of like <laughs> ingenuity is kind of like like betty white it's like everyone loves it and they did a great job and we're all sad that she's gone. What the like, hell, Jake? <laughs> like ninety nine? That's a, you nailed it. Like good job. We're just this is this is fine. This is great. You know, like <laughs> I would love Unhinged. to see hundred, but ninety nine is a great success. You know, seventy two flights or whatever it was. Well, seventy two, so yeah, it was seventy two flights it completed. That is the absolutely wild. The Betty White space helicopter. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to find that the Unhinged. video. Is this the video that? Uh, uh, where's the video clip that shows both things broken? That's what I'm trying oh, to find. yeah, I'm not sure. Because it was two rotors, right? That that had. Looks like two rotors, yeah. Do you were you that able to make rotor. sense of what the explanation was around this, Jake, about how this happened? Well, because there's there's counter rotating rotors, right? So they kind of go like this to cancel the torque out, right? Yeah. And so if two of them broken that are side by side like that, they could have like hit, you know, at the same time on the ground and that would be it. That's kind of my thought. Well, but I don't sorry, know I'm why, saying like their explanation of why it, why it got it, right? aggressively tipped. There was something I read that was like, it was too plain of terrain, so it was not tracking well. And then it tried to overcorrect because it didn't know where it was. Possibly, yeah. Cause like in the, so it's got like a- Oh, interesting. Hmm. What I do know about it is it has like, you know, a, an inertial measurement unit. So when it's like flying around, it kind of just detects, you know, it knows where it is because it knows where it isn't one of those kind of things. Right. <laughs> um, but then as it's landing, as it gets down to like a certain point, it like flips over to like camera mode. And then it's like literally like taking pictures and processing in real time as it gets closer and closer to the ground. So maybe in that period, if, if the camera mode doesn't work, you can but like it's had that problem before though and like right. the fail slips have always bailed it out right like it just goes into like land auto land mode i don't know what it is but it's just like some sort of thing where it can be like shut it down get down get down get down so, i don't know maybe it just screwed up who knows it's getting old you know what not rad hardened maybe it's got a little bit of bits flipped and stuff mm. who knows <laughs> had a good run had a great yeah. run did. Where does it rank in your Mars exploration power rankings, Ray? Like, give me, hmm. give me some some Mars robots. Is it in oh, the top man. tier? I would say it's one of the top. First, is it a dog or cat? Oh, um, helicopters are and rovers are dogs, like <laughs> nice. canonically. But an orbiter would be a cat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, now give me your Mars power rankings. Mars robots, I think power I think I think my current number one, and this is like the boring answer, but it's my answer, so it's right. Is I think Percy's got to be my number one. 
<laughs> when you said boring answer, I thought for sure you're going to say Mars Odyssey because it's like the backbone of the communications network. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the infrastructure. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I really do have to say, I think Percy's my number one currently. All right. I'm all right. enjoying um, Percy's social media presence as well. I like the selfies. And I really, I just like that Ingenuity and Percy were a team. And I feel kind of bad for Percy being out there now without ingenuity. Now, so now Percy's a widow. Yeah. <laughs> Percy's a widow. She, what? It's really dark on this episode. Yeah. He's seriously. taking this ingenuity thing really hard. <laughs> I'm just trying to process. Okay. I'm trying to use trying to use humor to cope. <laughs> <laughs> You're processing in your own way. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Jake, what's your what's your power ranking? Well, wait, is Ingenuity number two or what, Ray? Where was it at? You didn't even give me, you gave me number one. Mm. That was it. Give me a short list. Give me like three at least. Maybe like Oppie number two. Strong. And then I would say Ingenuity three. Hmm. All right. Jake? Hmm. Okay. Mars yeah, Robot Power Rankings. Curiosity. All right. Yeah. Curiosity, here's why. yeah. Curiosity, like, has delivered. Percy will deliver, hopefully, but most of Percy's value is in the, in the, not most of it, but a large, a non-trivial amount of Perseverance's value is in the examples. And like, that's mm -hmm. a little up in the air these days. So I'm just like, you know, okay, well, so, but Curiosity got the, got the work done and yeah, did well. So Respectable. Okay. Yeah. And then what? Then probably Opportunity. You can't, you can't yeah. leave Opportunity out of like the top three. That'd be, that'd be heresy we can't do that not right. on my show <laughs> oh i'm glad i answered the right thing <laughs> this is a hard question to ask me it's like asking what your favorite child is i mean i'm just trying to get a sense for where we're at on uh you know on what's what's going on here because i feel like ingenuity is getting a little bit of a raw deal here honestly <laughs> i feel like i feel like y'all are over ingenuity as a thing and it's what are you putting it on your it's, right? It's my number three. It's my I'm number three. Just, I know. I just feel like it's, you know. Oh, my God. I feel like it's a little low. That's all I'm saying. I think. <laughs> so I, Is it your number one? I don't know. I just thought of this question three minutes ago, so I'm still working through this, Ray. Jeez. Damn, uh, dude. Well, you got to get to it. I Come think I'm, I'm waiting more heavily, like, the tech development angle of. Yeah, yeah. Like, certainly when it got there, we were pretty sure it was going to work, but I feel less sure about it working than all the rovers that rolled off any of their landing pads. So I'm, I'm giving it some points for not only did it unveil a whole new realm in Mars exploration to us, exceeding uh, expectations. it also points. was, yeah, awesome. Like it, it did its thing for so long. And then I'm, I'm also a little bit swayed by what I felt from the outside completely without evidence or information. So this is maybe not true that, like early on in the mission, I could see it feeling the existence of ingenuity feeling like a little bit of a drag on the Perseverance team. But then 70 flights in, like carving out a good job for it and realizing yeah. how it became useful on the mission. And I kind of like the underdog story of it feeling like a really annoying thing when it started. And now they're probably really sad that it's gone because it's not doing the jobs that they've given it over the last tens of flights. And I kind of dig that storyline too. Like this is the first <laughs> robot that like just had some grit and worked its way into operations rather than like these other no ones way. that just are like, you know, creme de la creme when they get there. It's, so. uh, it's, a, yeah. it's a very Leslie Nope storyline from Parks and Rec. Because <laughs> in the first season, she was a little bit annoying. And then in all seasons after that, she was incredible. And like, <laughs> so I'm assigning some points for that as well. All right. Well, that's yeah. fair. That's, I like that. That's good reasoning. I get it. But yeah. I, so what's high rise on MRO? Yeah, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter. I'm throwing that up in the top three for sure because those pictures mm. are awesome. Yeah. And uh, that's... It's, yeah. a, it's a hard ranking to do. It's tough. It, is. it gets it's pretty crowded. Very like, hard. Even, so someone even did the math in our Discord about like, okay, well, you know, what percentage of its lifespan did it exceed? So like 72 flights out of five. So you do that math. And it's like, oh, it's mm -hmm. going to... It's 14 times longer than it was supposed to be, or whatever, and it like doesn't even come close to what Opportunity did. Like, it's like Opportunity was like 60 times longer, or whatever, whatever like incredible number it was, right? So it's like, oh, okay, yeah, like Opportunity really, really that, exceeded that one was particularly sandbagged, though, wasn't it? Uh, what was I the 90 the, day, 90 souls based on? 
I think a lot of it was based on the solar panels. And so I think they got lucky with some of that okay. when they discovered okay. the dust devils were a thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So some of that is luck. Um, but I mean, there's also some pretty, pretty good ops teams um, fighting to keep those things alive. So yeah, they did well. I just, I'm always been mystified by 90, 90 souls. Like that's. I, I am too. And like, at yeah. first I didn't believe it. I didn't, I was like, you're, yeah, you're totally Sam, but I totally thought that. And then I like heard some stories about how the team was operating, like in those first 90 souls and like, you know, read all the books and stuff and like, no, like they were ready for it to die. They were sleeping at JPL trying to get every last wow. minute. Of, like they were. They were ready. They were on Mars time. They were coming in the middle of the night. They were doing whatever they could to just operate that for every second of those 90 souls. So I don't know. Maybe they did yeah, have a seems good... Seems more legit then. <laughs> yeah, maybe they did have a pretty good fear that it was going to... When what? Do you know what day they stopped doing that? Like, <laughs> when did they start going, ah, we might make it 2,000? Like... <laughs> I don't remember. Yeah, when, when Mars time stops, that's always a good indicator for when it's like the hype's over, right? But I can't remember now. I don't. I don't remember. Because it's, I get like, you know, Soul 91, you're like, oh, we should still be sleeping here. Soul 92, we probably should stay yeah. a couple more days, you know. But then it gets to like Soul 108, you're like, oh, I feel like I could probably go eat dinner with my family at this point. Like this yeah. seems like we got it on lockdown. <laughs> I just want to know what that moment is like. <laughs> Soul 4,420, you're just like, yeah, someone's yeah. got it. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. It's fine. So. <laughs> Yeah. Um, what robots are you excited about in the near future, Ray? Or what's your Intuitive Machines landing hype level? So, like, just in general, what what like missions am I excited about? Yeah, we got a lot of robots coming up. You know? Oh my gosh, we have so many. Well, I think that we can't talk about Ingenuity without talking about Dragonfly, right? Like, I mean, it's far off. But... Yeah. I mean, you know, I'm the most it's just... Dragonfly. Fan Dragonfly the time. is Jake's a, a little bit point around here, Ray. It's a oh really? A... There's just a little bit of a divide here on this side of the screen, yeah. you know. Interesting. Jake's a realist, and I'm an optimist on the Dragonfly mission. Interesting. <laughs> that's, why, that's why you ranked Ingenuity higher, because you're like you're you have more fun in your life. <laughs> a dog, one would say. <laughs> yeah. I want to see yeah. Titan helicopter. I want to see those methane lakes. Me too. Bring it on. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, let's see. What else? What else? Europa Clipper. That's pretty rad. I'm excited for Europa Clipper. Yeah. I'm excited for that. that uh, Clipper, Clipper's going to have a October. good, a good year. Launches. Clipper's going to have a good fall if my uh, John Culberson prediction was right for the last, <laughs> the last episode where I was like, I think he might come back as an asset administrator at some point in the future. Um, <laughs> Clipper, low key. I there was so much Europa back and forth over the preceding several years that I feel like I lost the plot for a little bit on which one of these things was flying when, and mm. then all of a sudden Europa Clippers here. Uh, yeah, like almost ready. Yeah, <laughs> but then it takes a while, right? How, I forget how long it takes to get up. Yeah, there. yeah. How long is it actually? It's gonna be like a couple of years, right, to get uh, to where it needs to go. I'm not sure. Unless it flies. I know it launches at yeah. least in October. Sounds like they might have an SLS available. <laughs> Imagine if that happened. Oh, dear. Uh, let's see. So, yeah, it's going to be like 20 years, right? Yeah, yeah. 23 before it gets there. So it'll be a while. Wow. Yeah. So that's. Outer planets what... are real. Yeah. April scheduled drag years. Hmm. All Dang. Right. Yeah, it's it's like the Outer Planets mission is always like, and we got to contain that excitement, but also still be really excited. But That's also... why we were all confused by Dart, though, because Dart launched, yeah. and then a year later, we're like, wait, it's, here, it's happening already? The thing's doing <laughs> yeah, the thing? it exploded, yeah. yeah. <laughs> God, I love the Dart mission, though. I mean, like, also RIP, I guess, to Dart. Although we'll have Hera to see, like, what the hell happened, right, in the aftermath of Dart. So that should be fun. That's what's up. Yeah. I'm so mad that Hera like didn't launch at the same time. Like we should have had that thing in place. Ooh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm that mad about that. Is, that's an interesting take. I didn't think about that. Like to just have it immediately at the scene of the crime. Like just have yeah. it there. And like, cause there well, there was a mission, so they had that like little that Italian CubeSat that like jettisoned from Dart and then took mm -hmm. pictures. So we have like some shots of the thing happening, which is great, but like it was like not 
it was not the best spacecraft. You know, it was like, it was okay. It kind of like got the job done, but it would have been great to have. I want high def video of this impact. So That's what I want. Crowd to be slagging on these Italian spacecraft, Jake. <laughs> Check well, hey, the man. last names on this channel before you. It's fine. It's fine. If you got counter the argument, please. I'm happy to hear it. Yeah. Yeah. Did you take a picture of it when it was happening? <laughs> <laughs> Were you out there? Uh, With a little jet pack in space. A robotic a arm iPhone. and a camera in there. <laughs> That's right. We had two arms and we just smashed the two together. That's how we did it. <laughs> That's hysterical. Oh my God. How I'm... rad would that have been? See that? that like, and it, it's vast, right? So it would have been just like, poof, right? It would have been just like wild. And that would have done numbers thing. on TikTok. You know, we're, yeah, we're like, we're the, you know, like ejecta in like that kind of gravity environment just goes like, it's like a triangle. It just goes out forever. Like it never ever comes down. There's no arc, you know? So it's just, that would have been wild to see. I wish we had a, I wish we had that. But. Hmm. I'll take second best time to invest is now, you know, let's do it. Just <laughs> doing the tree planting <laughs> saying on the show here. Exactly. First, first best time to launch an asteroid impactor imager mission was 30 years ago. Yeah. Uh, I'm pretty caught up on the moon. I'll be honest. I'm not really thinking about these other planets for a bit. It's clip season, baby. We're doing all these moon landers. So I don't know. Like Peregrine does a whole thing. Intuit Machines is about to do it. It's flying methane. It's going more directly to the moon. So it won't be as long of a wait. Is any of it going to work? They have another mission as well where Peregrine was one and done. So that's intriguing as well. Like even if they screw up the first one, they'll learn and have the same thing to fly again. Mm -hmm. So that's mm -hmm. intriguing as well. Like, you know, I don't know. I'm just, it's happening, Jake. Eclipse season is upon us. You're a lunatic. I'm a lunatic, hey. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Speaking of the moon, Jake. Speaking uh, of. Uh, sometime in the near future, we all get to see the moon in a different light. Mm -hmm. Hey. Right? Yes. Isn't, that, isn't that true? Yeah. It sure kind of, is. Kind of a corona-like light, yes, yes. Hey, <laughs> like, I know this map. <laughs> amazing yeah oh my gosh i cannot believe we're gonna get to see a little treat a total solar eclipse have either of you been in the path of totality before in the 2017 yeah. one yeah oh yeah yeah wow this will be my first time being in the path of totality oh, so shit. i'm really stoked for this yeah where, I, where are you I, going I, God. so um we i'm going to the Planetary Society's event, we're calling it Eclipsorama. It's going to be super cool. Everybody should come. Um, it's going to be in Fredericksburg, Texas. And uh, mm -hmm. we can set up some links afterwards. But yeah, this is the our hub on the Planetary Society's website. And uh, as you can see, we've got this really, really cool interactive eclipse map where you can see basically where the path of totality lies, where you are. Uh, you can see things like cloud cover, light pollution, eclipse duration, all sorts of viewing nice. locations. And uh, I, though, like I said, will be in Fredericksburg, Texas for our event. Um, anybody is welcome to buy tickets, hang out with us. It's going to be really, really fun time. Um, I'm really looking forward to it. And it's right in the path, so it'll be great. Right. You're going to have your mind blown. So good. That's I'm so <laughs> excited. I remember the last solar eclipse I was in the city in New York. And... Um, Everybody just went outside and looked up with our little glasses on, and it was one of the most wholesome moments. Um, <laughs> there really is something to be said about just everyone having a shared experience with something like this. I don't know. That's really cool. You, um, the rest of New York, Donald Trump, all looking up at the... <laughs> <laughs> one of the iconic photos of that eclipse. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm sad the eclipse is the next year so he could do it again as president, right? <laughs> John Culberson <laughs> next time. <laughs> we got a real yeah. world building situation going on here. <laughs> uh, yeah. uh, what wow. else do I have to say about the eclipse? Well, we also, I should definitely plug our resources. We've got a ton of great content coming out from the Planetary Society. 
We've got lots of stuff on our website on the uh, hub that you're looking at right now. We've got videos. We have an Eclipse course for our members that's actually launching tomorrow. So you heard it here, folks. Uh, we have that launching. There's a whole course about eclipses. Um, so you can learn tons about that. And um, that, like I said, that's for the members, but anybody could buy tickets to our event and anybody can look at our resources. They're free, they're there, they're on the internet. Go see them. Um, yeah, I'm really excited. I don't know, personally, I am just so stoked to be in the path of totality. This will be like an unlocking a life event, I feel. It's it's like yeah, more true is. than you it's realize. Especially 100% for space nerds. Online. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a, I mean, I remember just the, the the thing I always remember is my brother after I went to Nashville with my dad and my brother took a little road trip had a great boys weekend did the eclipse <laughs> uh, and I remember afterwards uh, my brother was like I didn't know exactly when to take my sunglasses off and I but I then I looked over and your jaw was on the floor and I thought this must be the moment to do it <laughs> and I distinctly remember just like you know we had a perfectly clear sky and it it felt like you are go from being on the earth looking at the normal sky to like oh i'm just in the solar system looking at other parts of the solar system because you got the <laughs> corona and all the planets are there and you have a much like out of earth view of the solar system for a couple of minutes and that's like yeah i yeah. can't get that out of my brain it is just in there forever i think the so the like the part that like stuck with me emotionally was the the mood of the light because like the light sort of like it get, it doesn't like go away it sort of like desaturates in a weird way like the light kind of like it's like the, all the sunlight is there but it's kind of like faded and gray rather than like real sunlight and then it, the temperature drops a little bit because the sun's not mm. on you and, and all the animals like all the birds are like what the yeah. what's going on I like, all the out birds are out is, it's so what? weird <laughs> did you yeah, experience just, did you see any animals like acting strangely I just, I could hear the bird. I remember like oh, the, yeah. the bird okay, calls cool. stopping, right? I was in Oregon and it was like, I could just remember the, I just remember the environment feeling just super, super weird. Yeah. Just like, Ooh, this is like, I'm, something's happening, you know? Like, <laughs> I was in a pretty grassy park. So it was all birds and bugs. And yeah, the birds stop, yeah, bugs yeah. start going wild. And it's a, Wait, like, it's a really bizarre. You were at a what park? For some reason, I thought you said I was at Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park, <laughs> Nashville. Yeah, yeah. It's huge. It's Dolly Parton's new thing that she set up. Mm -hmm. Is actually mm -hmm. she's done Good the Jurassic her. Park project. <laughs> Good for her. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> she's got Betty White and Ingenuity there as well. It's, it's the whole <laughs> the whole crew. <laughs> cut that! Cut that! Cut that! <laughs> The, taking it the, out on the live stream. The Betty White Dolly Parton Jurassic Park Ingenuity experience. It's huge. It's huge. It really Bill Nelson was the cutting tongue. the ribbon for that little helicopter. It's great. The yeah. little dinosaur. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, super grassy. It was a very grassy park. So there was a lot of trees and bugs and birds and everything. Oh, grassy. Um, That's the grassy. word I missed. I was like, Jurassic. Oh, grassy. <laughs> I was yeah. like, yeah. what? I also That's like amazing. That the way these two have, the way the one that we had already happened and the way this one's going to happen too is that you have this like straight line across the continent, right? And so there's also this thing where like all the people you know that are also doing it, you can like, there's like a weird like, okay, off to you, you're next. Like, I just saw it, like, get ready in two minutes, it's going to be there for you. And then like, you can kind of like do this chain of like all your friends along the line, which I found really enjoyable. So that is really pass, cool. Yeah, I got to pass it off to Anthony last time, and this uh, that was good. Now, you, now you'll be able to pass it off to us, right? Yeah, absolutely. I will say one thing that's cool about this map. Um, and by the way, I should give a huge shout out to the Eclipse Company, um, the team that created this map um, in partnership with us. I think that this is just a good place to get started. Um, we also have a listing of just local um, Eclipse events. If you're looking for places to go, if you're really just getting started with your planning. It's a great resource. Uh, and then, like I said, if you want to level up your space knowledge too, we've got the courses. Just we are full steam ahead on the Eclipse. It's going to be good. That's awesome. Yeah, and people that watch the show probably know, but like, please urge all of your people that you know that live in the 90 point something percent range and up to say like you really gotta yeah. just drive a little bit to get yeah, across yeah. the line. It is. Yeah, the difference between totality and not totality is 
like it's night and day it's night and day quite literally. <laughs> literally literally the corona is one of the coolest things i've ever seen in my life it mm -hmm. is 100 percent the coolest thing i've seen in my life i would actually say yeah, yeah. it's so wow the detail is really interesting and it's enormous and it kind of felt like the you know those pictures of if the andromeda galaxy was uh like if you could see it as bright as it was or whatever this is how big it would look in the sky <laughs> like i yeah, feel yeah, like yeah. that about the solar corona as well like oh it's that big the whole time yeah. it goes all the yeah. way across like that yeah 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 yeah, yeah. yeah and That's i did so the cool. i did the um the annular eclipse that just mm -hmm. happened i did oh, that right. one because it, oh, cool. it came over mexico and it was not the same like it was it was awesome i'm glad i went but like it is not like annular to total very very different like uh it is and lunar eclipse totals Jake. The one to see. <laughs> and lunar eclipses <laughs> Boring. Boring. <laughs> I'm telling you. You know this moon. Neil deGrasse Tyson you hate video? The moon. No, but do you know? You, do you know hate the... the moon. Jake hates the moon. Do you know the Neil deGrasse Tyson video that we're referencing? No, uh, actually, I don't. Oh my god. <laughs> Jake is such a moon hater. It's no, like I was just... no, no. I was quoting. I was quoting. I was quoting. I love the moon. Yeah, I love the moon yeah. I've taken my telescope out into a field in the middle of a cold Canadian winter to watch a lunar eclipse. So I think I get points for that. <laughs> I got to find My this hands one. were numb and I was watching that damn Noted thing. moon despiser. <laughs> Noted. It's terrible. You hate to see it. I'm Where telling are you going to go, Jake? I'm... Where are you going to be for this eclipse? So I'm going home, not, uh, not to Alberta, but to uh, uh, Ontario, where I used to live, because uh, the eclipse is going over Niagara, and I used to live there. My aunt was there, and I got a bunch of friends there. So I was like, I'm going to combine this with a trip to see people, because then if I get clouds, it's not a waste. <laughs> then, uh, yep. Yeah. So I'll be in Niagara, and we'll have to. I'm thinking about. I'm thinking about getting like getting some off, you know, some anomalies together, and see if we can have a little bit of a meetup. So stay oh, tuned. So if you're cool. like, if you're in, you know, the Toronto area or the Buffalo area, or like in that general vicinity, and you want to come hang out in Canada, that would be. Uh, we should be able to make something happen. I think. I'm gonna be in the general region. I'm still yeah. doing a little bit of logistics, logistics. and yeah. I have a couple of plans in place. My intention is a driving situation because I'll be bringing the little three-year-old along to see this thing. Uh, I have a room booked in Dayton right now, which is in the path, and also oh, could cool. finally let me go to the Air Force Museum, which I've been dying to go to, but I just had no reason <laughs> to go out to Dayton for a long time, and <laughs> it's a shockingly long drive from here, but I'm like, oh, maybe I'll do this. This uh, museum's got a whole Titan IV in there. Do you know about this? There's a whole hmm. Titan IV in this museum. No. The Valkyries there. There's all sorts of, there's all the weird X-planes there. A lot of good stuff. So I'm like, well, it's a little joint situation. Air Force Museum, Eclipse. I'm trying to figure out timing if I can make my way up to your off nominal uh, across the border meetup. But we're going to be oh, yeah. in the like cloud dodging zone, Jake. We're going to have to a big logistical yes. part of planning is if you're if you're just now picking a spot and you can't go to any of our parties, uh, find a good spot in the center line that has a good highway system that goes sort of along the center line, too. So like when I went to Nashville, it was almost there was a highway like almost exactly cruising that thing so we could drive to wherever it was not cloudy that day if you need to mm -hmm. so if you if you can find a good highway stretch that gives you like an hour of driving distance and you can sort of you know do your best to dodge storms or something that gives you a good shot okay all right yeah sage advice sage advice sage advice all right other sage advice that i need to run by you right now i'm i think i found the neil degrasse tyson clip that i definitely okay. want to play because if this is the right one I want your take on it. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know how to, apparently YouTube shorts only let it be full volume. So I've got to turn it down in this other interface real quick. All right, let's see <laughs> if this is the right one. I don't know if it is. We're just going to give it a shot. We're going to give it a spin. Hey, everybody. As your resident astrophysicist, I'm duty bound to alert you that on the evening of November 18th, 2021, into the wee hours. Is this the right one, Jake? November 19th, I think so. 1 a.m. Eastern time. The full moon in space, in its orbit around Earth, will enter Earth's shadow. Earth's shadow is always there. You don't know it until something lit up by the sun begins to disappear behind it. So we call that a lunar eclipse. There'll be a lot of hype. People have been loving full moons lately, so that'll get attention. But these things happen slowly, 
and it takes hours typically and there's nothing really spectacular about it so i must tell you that it's boring <laughs> it's the most boring thing i have ever experienced <laughs> i just thought i'd tell you maybe i shouldn't even be making this video never mind <laughs> Okay, I'm glad that now I understand the context because I was ready to like say, Jake, <laughs> what is this weird beef you have with the moon? Wait, but now give us your take. Off. Give us your response to Neil deGrasse Tyson's take on lunar eclipses. Wait, do you, I, but do you have to be careful though? Because like, is he still on the board of directors? I don't know. <laughs> here is, I'm just going to say I love the moon. I think lunar eclipses are great. Full statement. I, yeah, my statement is I think lunar eclipses are fantastic <laughs> and I love them so much. <laughs> I great. completely They're and great. wholeheartedly endorse Neil deGrasse Tyson's take on this particular issue and most other ones I just do not endorse on his uh, his yum yuckin <laughs> that he tends to get to on Twitter but yum this yuckin. particular take yeah. is accurate and I will go one further and say this is a fantastically put together video because he lulls you in with the facts and what's going on and he makes you intrigued and then hits you with the it's boring with the camera zoom it's a this is a perfect video <laughs> <laughs> it's a perfect video. Lunar eclipses God. are fine. They're kind of interesting, but I, I'm there with them. Like, you know, once you see a lunar eclipse, I'm kind of good. The solar eclipse, total solar eclipse, you got to go every time. So, how many total, I mean, sorry, how many solar eclipses have you both seen? Total, the one. Just the one. Yeah. Oh, two. One, one total. <laughs> <laughs> Stupid balloon. Oh my god. We're all uh, getting just like owned by these balloons today. I know. <laughs> and it always freezes my camera for like two seconds after. So but... good. No, I've seen it one total on annular, it. so so that's Oh, yeah. okay, gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So do you feel like your annular uh would you have a, a what's your annular like? Are you Neil deGrasse Tyson about annular eclipses? Like No, I think it was still fun. You still have the cool like shadow effect on the leaves. The ring of fire. You get to watch it, you see the ring of fire. Yeah, it was fine. But it's just like uh you know, it was not a total. Total eclipses are just in an upper echelon of incredibleness yeah. that, like, the, even the other cool things just, like, don't compare to it. And it doesn't mean other cool things are not cool. It just means that they're not total eclipses. Yeah. So, right. Yeah. Solar eclipses, cat or dog? Solar eclipses or dog? Lunar, Lunar eclipses. Cat. Cat. Boring. <laughs> She slow, low, low, low key endorsed it. Is all I'm saying. <laughs> no, <laughs> no. Oh, wow. But now I will say, now that you will have the framework for the cat dog thing, you will start to pick this up in your everyday life. It will stick with you. Trust me. I get it. I get it. Yeah. My, my wife, my wife has a thing with cats, dogs, and it, it extends your theory. It's like it's like. This, oh really? Like, yeah, because she says that um, uh, all dogs are boys and all cats are girls. That's like in her brain. <laughs> and, so, and so extending that, there's only <laughs> there's only boy dogs and girl cat things in the whole world. <laughs> you made one of those little four quadrant grids out of this. Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. An alignment grid. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I guess you only made a two, two quadrant. You eliminated two quadrants. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's That's only true. two. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. X X. Um yeah. Right, can you you give us a little bit of a sense of what Eclipsorama? Is that the right name? Yes. What yes, else what's going on there? What what's, are you going to be doing balloon animals? What do, what do you got? You we know what? It's so funny. It's so funny. That, oh! Is that what it is? Is it the P sign? P sign. Oh, yeah. I just did something else. I don't know. There's celebrations <laughs> happening me every time. <laughs> That's got to be the thumbnail for this. But um, yeah. <laughs> but I actually volunteered to do the balloon animals if we were serious about this because I used to make balloon animals. That's a fun fact. And I should put that on my LinkedIn. Okay. I know how to make balloon animals. I know how to do the hats. I know how to do the snakes. No, I'm just kidding. That would be just. Did like you work at like DJI <laughs> Fridays or something? Snake's the easiest <laughs> one, right? That's the first one you learn. <laughs> That's where all of the animals start, actually. <laughs> Before anything is a cat or dog, it starts as a snake. Yeah, it's really it just the art snake. of turning snakes into other animals. <laughs> yes, actually. That is basically just Balloon Animal 101. No, <laughs> that literally is it. That's, you just, that's it. A hat, it starts as a snake. A dog, 
Guess what? I, I, I think this is a far side comic. It's nearly a far side comic where where they have like God up in heaven with clay making all the animals, and he's just rolling the clay like this, going, "Wow, these are a cinch." <laughs> and it's like God makes snakes. <laughs> Same concept, exactly the same, same thing. Same concept. Yeah. But um, in, in, in all seriousness, the event's gonna be super cool. Um, it's basically we're gonna have movies playing, we're gonna have videos, we're gonna have interact like a whole craft tent. So there's lots of hands-on activities. Um, all ages are welcome to attend. We'll have lots of stuff for kids too. We'll have tons of games, uh, cool prizes. We're gonna do lots of fun stuff leading up to the actual moment of the eclipse so uh it's really like a whole experience yeah uh some people will be camping there's glamping options as well um so yeah there's really something for everyone i'm looking forward to it we'll have good food um yeah it'll be an awesome time that sounds right music <laughs> merriment what more could you want <laughs> merriment. french riviera 75s will they be in attendance french i will personally be making there. them <laughs> I will personally be making these. <laughs> How did you guys all pick Fredericksburg, Texas? I'm just curious about the selection committee behind this. Low cloud cover, I bet, right? Bingo. Yeah. Was there science, was the planet, science behind the this? The Planetary Society is still looking its wounds from the Carbondale 2017 uh, moment where the cloud oh, passed gosh. in front of the eclipse. <laughs> Never are, again. We're... We basically, we really did analyze a ton of different locations and this one's within the path of totality. It's got the best shot that we could find uh, with regard to cloud cover. Yeah, it's just, uh, that's what all the signs were pointing to. April feels tough. Like it, that feels like a tough month for cloud cover. Just, yeah. you know, weather pattern wise. I don't know. It's just, yeah. if I had to pick a month, I feel skeptical of the early spring. So I April, might get I mean, as a New Yorker, I'm yeah. always, Mm. Uh, well, that's yeah. why I was thinking, you I'm know, Dayton scared. at least has the fallback of this cool museum. At least I'll have done something really interesting and sciencey mm -hmm. out there. Mm -hmm. So, plus I could just keep driving and end up back in Tennessee, I guess. <laughs> Not that yeah. far from where I was the last time. So, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. I haven't really All started right. the hype process yeah. with uh, my son. I'll have to figure out what that process would be like. He's probably going to oh, look at me yeah. like this for a second. I'd be like, I don't know. He wants me to take him to see a rocket launch already, so that's good. Um, oh, that's cool. So, but I haven't really explained eclipses yet. He likes looking at planets, so he might be into it. Yeah. Yeah. I have you, have you broken the news? Like... That. Uh, I was saying, have you broken the news that there's no more pace puddles flying? Pace puddles. I know. That's how you used to pronounce space shuttle. It doesn't anymore. That was Aww. real cute. The pace puddles. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that one in LA is getting really cool looking though. <laughs> that's true. Yeah. yeah, it might fly. We'll see. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty sweet. Anyway, uh, Ray, what else you got? What else you got going on at the Planetary Society other than the Eclipse stuff? Is there other stuff going on that you'd want to throw out there? Oh my gosh, there's so much cool stuff that we're working on. Um, I can't say everything, but I will say that we are doing a ton of new short form video stuff. So like TikTok. Follow us, Instagram, follow us. Uh, we're doing all sorts of fun stuff coming up in the next few months. But right now, it's all Eclipse all the time. Uh, definitely check us out, planetary.org. I heard one of your early TikTok videos is a uh, lunar eclipse hype video. That's what I, I've heard. You might have we to have... put some content out about that. <laughs> Get into a little battle. Exciting! <laughs> yeah, see if you can be able to do that. I love the moon. <laughs> Just run it by Bill. If he's really moon. pumped about lunar eclipses, see if he'll put out a hype video. That's I'll put request. down the editor editorial yeah. calendar. Yeah. I'll love make it, a note. <laughs> Jake? Oh, dear. What do we got? Well, what do we got? The um, Discord. We didn't talk about the pre-show, which was... Yeah, yeah. We had a fun pre-show today. We dissected docking ports versus berthing ports on the International Space Station. So did a little lesson, learned a little bit. Taught ourselves a little bit. Ray, birthing port, cat or dog? Uh, dog. Docking port? Cat. Cat. Solitary. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> yeah. Gee, it. you're catching up. I get it. I get it. Birthing port is with friends. Docking port is solitary. I understand. Yeah. yeah. 
So if you want to learn about uh, all the different kinds of animals on the ISS, you should come to <laughs> and uh, you know pop into the Discord. We have the pre-show. It's 45 minutes before this starts. It's a lot of fun. Uh, nice tight crowd. You can ask questions and have fun. Uh, so Discord. Offnom.com slash Discord is where you can go. We and fixed the link too. I think last week the link didn't work and I fixed the link. Yeah, yeah, so. yeah. We fixed the link. Yeah. So, <laughs> uh, so yeah. That's it. That's the pitch. That's it. Ray, you are the best. We always love having you around. It's been too long. One more balloon's on the way out. <laughs> this is the best way it could possibly end. <laughs> See you later, everybody. <laughs> you guys are the best. Take Bye. care. Bye. <laughs>